Kyle, given the way the season has started, I just wonder what you feel is the biggest challenge facing the whole group this season? Um, I think it's just about consistency. We just keep playing at the level that we're playing at. I don't think we'll you know, come across many oppositions that's going to cause as much problem. I mean, with the strike force that we've gotten, more importantly for me, keeping clean sheets, um, I think we're going to be tough, but you know, it's a lot of work to keep doing. You know, we need to keep listening to the gaffer and you know, his tactics, and hopefully that will see us across the line. And in terms of the dressing room dynamic, I heard at the weekend that Pochettino said that everyone at Spurs is in love with Harry Kane. That's the manager, the fans, his teammates as well. Who here at Manchester City kind of falls into that same category? I think there's a number of players. Um, you know, I think that's what's blessed about this squad that we've got. You know, a lot of game winners um, and a lot of you know fantastic talent players. So you know, I think there's a number of players that fall into that category. Uh, hello, Kyle. It's the first time we've had a, a proper chance to talk to you since you've got the Manchester City badge on now as well. So how do you feel that you've settled in? What is the atmosphere like and, and how are you feeling at Manchester City? No, I mean, <clears throat> obviously being there for nine years, it was, you know, it's a big change for me. But, you know, I've settled in really well. The lads have been very welcoming. Uh, the gaffers, you know, been, you know, very understanding and made me give a little bit of time, you know, to adapt to the training and stuff like that. But, um, you know, I'm fully enjoying it. You know, it's an exciting chapter of my career. And when we're producing wins that we keep doing, you know, it's, it's good to be around the place. And in terms of relationships that will develop, I'm sure, even better over time, with Kevin De Bruyne just in front of you, how well do you two seem to work and how well do you think he's done over the last few weeks as well? No, I think Kevin's shown for the last number of seasons what a player he is. And, you know, for me to play behind him it's a joy you know to watch and it's helping my game a lot as well because I can learn you know tips off of him um, and hopefully I can provide the you know the outlet ball and a bit of width for him to get you know around the side of him and you know give him that extra pace so uh, you know it seems to be going well fingers crossed and you know long may it continue but you know there's still a long season to go I think we all know that as a squad of players and we need to just keep working hard keep doing the basics right and for us as defenders, as I keep saying, you know, the clean sheets is vital for us. Kyle, what, what's it like to play for Pep Guardiola? On the touchline, he seems very intense. There's a lot of instructions. What's it like, particularly being on a, in the touchline, so you're kind of the nearest to him? Um, no, I mean, he's always giving off words of encouragement. And I think the, the stand of the players and the teams that he's managed in, you know, in the past speaks volumes. So... It's, you know, it's a good motivation to have there, you know, the calibre of manager that he is. And hopefully, you know, we can just keep performing as we're doing. Um, you know, he always still wants more from us, which I think is good for us, you know, to keep pushing us. And as I say, you know, as I keep saying, if we keep doing the basics right and, you know, keep performing at the level that we're performing at, um, you know, hopefully we'll be a force to, you know, be hopefully not be stopped. You always ask about uh, relationships with, with players. Uh, you seem to have a very healthy, bantery relationship with Mr Mendy on the opposite uh, side and, and all the nutmegs and stuff like that. Is that something that gives you extra motivation to have that type of relationship with one of your teammates? I think, you know, if you know me, you know, relatively well, you know, I do like a bit of banter. Um, he started it, I'm going to say that. You know, he, he came for me first, um, so I... As soon as he got the nutmeg um, in Holland last time, I had to jump back on it, you know, for him. Uh, but he seems to, he's just relentless. I called him, I was speaking to, you know, the people that helped me do my social media as well. And we're just saying he just keeps coming with things. So I'm probably going to have to lay down for this one for a little bit till something comes up. Any more questions for Kyle? To play, to play against is a nightmare. Um, obviously, facing him, you know, numerous seasons, he always seemed to score against us, and it, it was frustrating. So having him, you know, I'm on the same team with him now. It's a, it's a big bonus. Um, you, I mean, listen, he's a quality player. You can see what he's done in the Premier League. Um, and I think, you know, around the dressing room as well, he helps, you know, helps the younger lads and we can kind of lean on him as well. And he gives us the advice and we kind of know that, 
all right, you know, things aren't going well. He's the type of player that can produce a bit of magic for us and, you know, put us that one goal up or get us back into the game. Just following on from that question, now that you've, you've played against him, but now you're sort of seeing him every day in training, you're, you're seeing him in the flesh. What, what's he like, or how different is he to what you, to what you expected, Sergio? Um, on the field, I mean, there's no difference. You can see what what a good player he is. Um, off the field, he's a little bit quieter than I thought, but um, I think his presence around the place, you know, just gives off the vibe that you know it's a positive presence and. He gives off the vibe of winning. He's got, he's got a winning mentality and, you know, he wants the best from his players, um, as we all do from each other. So anything below par, you know, I think he'll be one of the first ones to say, come on, this isn't right. You know, let's, you know, let's pick it up. But luckily he hasn't had to have a word with us so far and, you know, hopefully he doesn't throughout the season. OK, one more for Carl and we'll, we'll start with that. Carl, just on the, on the full-backs, Obviously, it's central to the way City want to <coughs> play, and obviously you and Benjamin Danilo are obviously coming. How how nice is it as a fullback to come in uh, to a team with such an onus on it, and you're considered so cru crucial to the way of playing? Um, I think that was probably one of the the big reasons for signing here that the 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 gaffer likes to play the way that I like to play uh, with attacking fullbacks, but. You know, the, the, the standard of fullbacks as well, you know, is very high. So it's improving me as a player. I know I need to keep training hard, you know, keep working at the things that I need to improve on, you know, just to make sure that, you know, I get that shirt that comes Saturday or in the Champions League. Um, so I think it's all going to push us, all three of us, you know. You know, Danny can play left or right. Obviously, me and ben, uh, Mendy are occupying each side. But, you know, it's, it's a good dressing room to be around in. And we all expect high standards from each other. So, as I say, you know, we just need to keep we keep working hard um, as a back three, well, as a back three of the full backs and, you know, keep doing what the gaffer says, uh, keep attacking and offering the outlet for the midfielders and creating space, really. OK, thanks, Carl. Cheers. Thank you. Okay, so we'll take questions in Spanish at the end. Um, and just see a show of hands for the mics, please. Pep, just how excited are you by the levels, the standards that the side is setting at the moment? <coughs> well, good morning. It's it's better to be in that position, but it's just just in September. It's a long time, long games to to play, still to play. But how do you strike that balance? Because obviously, there's a lot of hype surrounding the side with the attacking football that they're playing the goals that they are scoring as well. How, as a manager, do you strike that balance between keeping the feet on the floor and not getting carried away with it? No, nah, it's easy. So the players know it's in September. So the last, the last years, uh, always Manchester City start good and after we were not able to achieve our, our results. So it's just in September. So game by game and focusing on competition now and, uh, and uh, game by game. Can I just check on Kevin De Bruyne? There's been talk that he could be offered a, a new extended contract, improved terms. What is the situation there? And is he the kind of player that you love having around the place? No, I think so, yeah. Uh, I think the, I said the last, my previous last conference, so the, the, the transfer window closed in 1st of September, but uh, I'm still working on it and, of course, and we want to, like a club, we want Kevin and the other one to stay as long as possible, as much as possible. Um, hello, Pep. Uh, may I ask you about the atmosphere at the moment? I appreciate that that intensity is still there that has been there since you've arrived at the club. I'm sure you want the focus to continue. But there's a lot of smiles on a lot of your players' faces now at the moment. It, it seems to be really enjoyable to play for Manchester City. Well, we win. But well, you were winning at this this time last year, but they just it just the f it feels like is there nothing different for you? You think? The smiles are in our face were in our faces last season in that period, too. So uh, we win. We will win every season, and all all we are looking at and observing and saying, oh, that's good, that's good, is because we are winning. So we have to do is keep going in that, but. Uh, 
that is the secret. So we are professionals and uh, all the players are here to win games. And when they win their private lives, our life like a professionals are better. So it happened here and how all the teams around the world, no matter the, the division are you playing. So it, that is the reason why. And I know you don't want to get carried away because obviously the amount that you won at the same time last year, but you know what a winning and a special team is. Can you see the, the start of something particularly special now? Believe me, what my feeling is a lot of times we play in that way last season, but in the, in the boxes we were, we were not good. So, so that, that game would happen in the last season. For example, they had two chances, one of loss of cheek and one cross of out. Last season was goal, and that season no. And uh, the last minute, uh, in the first half, we scored a goal. Last season didn't happen once. So we are, I think we are more comfortable now in the terms of when we arrive there, we are feeling, oh, maybe we're going to score a goal. And when they arrive, we defend better. So, but the average, the how many chances we create or how many chances we concede, I don't know the statistics, but it's quite similar, I think, so on the last season. And the difference is, of course, when you win, you win again. But I said, like I said before, so... So the stability of one team, when you believe, OK, it's stable, the day after it's going down. So you have to be carefully and work in our habits, habits and our fundamentals. And always we can do better. And tomorrow is another test to, to show that. Pep, is it possible to compare how this squad is adapting to you and you to them with what happened at Bayern Munich and what happened at Barcelona and how long it's taking to evolve? Bob, it's too early to say that many things because uh, we have players here that uh, we I didn't have in the past and I don't have players I had in the past so so it's difficult to me to compare because at least in there when I were there it's easy to defend our 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 ideas because we won a lot of titles here we didn't win absolutely anything so and we will be judged for that so the brilliant the style and all these kind of things only I can talk about that it's me but I defend 100% what I'm talking about. You are demanding titles, not the way we played. So that is, that is I have to, to try to win the titles, and, and for that you have to win games. Pep, how was, how was Benjamin Mendy came off on, on Saturday? We're going to make proofs test if he's able to play. Um, in terms of the full-backs, it, Benjamin, Kyle and Daniil, they got four assist between them. Can you just talk about how they offer something at fullback that maybe you didn't have last year in terms of attacking? Uh, I don't like, believe me, I don't like to say how often not because I am denying how good they were my fullback last season. So when I'm saying, oh, they got Mendy has that and the other one I'm talking about in the subtitles, I am saying that my previous fullback were not good enough. And that is not true. They did really well. They did really well the way because, but we decided to change, especially for the age. That is only Paulo th thought, so that is my last period. But Cola decided to move on to Rome again. And, uh, and Gael and, and, and Bacari, they were 32, 33 years old. And we, we thought we need energy. We, we thought young, young fullbacks. That was the reason why. But I don't like to compare because every play is completely different. And they, they, they had quality, for example, they don't have the, the guys who we have now, no. but the guys who had the quality to go up and down with that energy, so that's why we, we make it his effort, our club make this effort to, to take them. Pep, it was, it was this game last year against Celtic where your winning run came to an end. Does that serve as a bit of a warning for you for this time around? Uh, it's the seventh time I play against Shakhtar Donetsk in my career. One is final Super Cup and uh, three times in the Champions League. And every time I play before them, I have the f same feeling, the same, uh, yeah, the same feeling. So I remember the first time we faced in the in the group stage against them. My 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 team were to to see them and come back and say, wow. So I'm really impressed against the team I saw right now. Fernandinho playing in that moment, Douglas Costa, a lot, a lot of Brazilian and Ukrainian good players. And in Barcelona, it's all the time it was the same. So Shakhtar Dona, the problem is Ukraine team. Who cares? Uh, which players play in that team? Nobody knows them. And I can assure you that one of the best teams in terms of playing football. They play with five or six Brazilian guys, all of them.
with Tyson Marlon, with uh, Bertrand, with uh, Eder. So they are a good, good players. And always they have a good team. Always was so tough for me, for our Barcelona team. By my team beat them. We have a good result, but always so tough. The final we won extra times, and uh, I have a lot of respect. And just they beat one of the best teams playing football right now, like Napoli. Napoli is one of the three or four or five better teams playing football in results because they are leading in the Italian league and they were able to beat them. So our group of stage have a tricky. The people said, OK, Napoli, it's not Juventus, not Milan, not Inter, uh, Shakhtar Donetsk, Ukraine. They have tricky. That group is tricky. And of course, it depends on our hands. If we are able to, to save it at home, especially in our next two games, will be a big gap to go to achieve 80 finals in February. Um, but uh, the players today are going to see how good they are. And hopefully I can convince them to take seriously. Of course, Champions League is serious. You play 30 minutes, we play in the first half in Crystal Palace. It will be so complicated. We are out in the Champions League against Monaco because in 180 minutes, we play 45 minutes bet and we are out. So in that level, you cannot uh, concede a lot, a lot of minutes not playing good, not be serious. Uh, because Shakhtar Donetsk, from my experience against them, deserve all, all my credit. Pe Pep, I know, I know you've been asked um, a lot about Sergio, but with him being a, a goal away from the equal in the club's record, do, do you feel, not just in terms of goal scoring, but he's uh, all round play, he's a, he's a more rounded and complete player now than the one you inherited, say, 12, 14 months ago? Do, do you feel there's. There's, a, there's more, you've helped bring out more. It's a way. question, it's a question you only can ask him. Answer, uh, only can answer Sergio. So we'll be arrogant, presumed to us, and disrespect, disrespectful for my other colleagues. So I'm thinking I, I made better Sergio than the other one. So I never said that one word in my all colleagues or my players, all players. So all I can say that as soon as possible can achieve that record. Like this, we cannot talk about that. So I'm pretty sure in the next game this is going to happen. So last game again, I scored a goal. I had two or three chances more. So that is the sense of the striker that we have. And um, and of course, help a lot. The now rush, for example, again, two more goals. I really was there. We are able to score more goals, more people. And the other opponents can be more focused in the other guys, not just with Sergio. And, and he's more free in that position to score more goals. But of course, I said last year, and I said every time, Sergio has no, no, no doubt, so one of the best strikers in the world. I, I just rephrasing the question then, I just wonder whether, from your perspective, you feel he's more at the place you want him to be in terms of what you I want think from your team. And how I, I, I think the quality that he had in the past is exactly the same. Maybe now we play more, more with him. So our our when we play, we are looking at more, not just in the finishing part, in the score a goal. So in the process, before Sergio has just scored a goal, be, be, say before last season with me, eh? so he just to score a goal there. Now when in the process when John or Nico, or Vincent or Dino or Yaya has the ball, always we know he's there, and we are, and that helps to be more involved. So it's difficult to say, come on Sergio. Try to be more involved in our game. We didn't pass one ball, so it's difficult. I think that's my feeling now. Everybody knows it's there, and we're going to try. And the quality to set the ball, the quality to dribbling a one. For example, like the the last goal he scored in Crystal Palace, or the action he made here, the dribbling one or two or three guys. That is that is new one. So we needed that. So when he arrived, had the ability to take a risk to dribbling one or two because his first meters, his first steps, wow, it's so quick. And he's so powerful in uh, in the legs, and uh, and and we need not just to score a goal in the first pause in one touch, you know, make these into elections. And I'm so happy, and so glad he's uh, he's doing that. So happy. Hi, Pep. Um, is there a chance Vincent Company could return tomorrow? And how is Ilkay Gundogan? Uh, Ilkay yesterday training, uh, part of the training. No part of training. He, he was floater, so he just play with the ball. Uh, and Vincent is still not ready for tomorrow. He's not ready? No. no. Sam? Hi, Pep. Uh, Kevin De Bruyne said over the weekend that he's one of five players on the Players Council um, with Fernandinho, Silva, Company, and Aguero. Um, what does that actually involve 
for them to do and how important is it for you to have five guys like that in the squad that you can presumably give The most important thing he likes to be part of that and there are players and there are process so you are a teenager girlfriend marriage kids so that is the same so you arrive in one but when you win something or you deserve something credit what you have done on the pitch and off the pitch you have to make the next step with the new players are coming like Cal the other one have to see have to be helped for the guys who was a long time ago and Kevin need needs that yeah, it's, it's a part to say okay I have to make a step forward not just playing good you know the mentality to help the other ones and to winning games and I'm so I'm so happy that he is he's there so what do you ask of, of these five players what what do you want from them well the role for the captains so seeing in the club seeing in teammates in the bad moments make a step forward uh, all, all the the rules, not right and rules, the the, the captains must to do or have to have to tell or have to say they have to do that. So it's like in Europe when like Real Madrid and Barca have three or four captains. Then. Yeah, yeah. Hello, Pep. Um, obviously, Mendy seems to be okay, but if you do lose one of your fullbacks uh, with a, a serious injury, could it give you a problem long term? We are going to find a solution. Have you have you got solutions in mind then? Yeah. Can you tell us any of them? No. <laughs> it's more it's funnier when you go to the stadium and see that in on the pitch. That is just words. So, but of course you have to prepare in some problems that happen. Find a solution. Well, obviously Fabian Delph is one of them. Is is do you see him as yeah. as, as a left back from now on? Yeah. No, he's a midfield player, but of course he can play in that position. Uh, when one person is nice, when a person is thinking what can do for the team, always you can play whatever you want. When one guy just thinking yourself, so sometimes it's more complicated. And Fabi is one, a person. Uh, the only I I am concerned is to keep to keep him uh, fit, uh, to avoid uh, injuries. But Fabi can help us a lot. So last season he played regularly, but most of the time he was injured. And at times my decision, but when he played, I remember in Stamford Bridge last season or against Hull City here, all the minutes he played last season, last last games, always playing high level, always. Pep, uh, may I ask you? It's here. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, may I ask your thoughts about Gabriel Jesus' uh, behavior in this Champions League environment? It's his first one, and uh, it seems that. His debut against Feyenoord, it was like another game for him in a positive way, no extra pressure. What are your thoughts about it? Gabriel is uh, Gabriel is holding out an option, and he had the last game two didn't play, but had an option. Everybody had an option to play. Now I have five strikers, which I, I, I trust a lot, a lot of them, and uh, there's no doubt about his capacity, ability, his impact when he arrived. To get in here, so in all terms, on off the pitch. And so I'm delighted with him. Of course, tomorrow is a guy who helps us a lot in the terms to help Sergio to score goals uh, in our pressing and dynamic, in, uh, in, in fighting, and a lot of things that maybe we didn't have with, with him, we have. And it's so important because the quality to score goals, it's. it's, it's he has that, and and the most important thing is the age. So he's so young. So he's just 21 or 22 years. Striker number nine from Brazil. So and uh, how you see him, how he train every single day, and he fight every game. So has the desire to become a good, a real good player in the world football, and that is so important for us. This question in Spanish, please. Is there? Uh, uh, I want to ask you about Shakhtar. 
what do you think is the reason why it was so difficult for you, your teams in your career to beat them? Well, because obviously they are very good uh, when they play with Luchescu, they were playing really good. Now they play uh, really good as well. With Luchescu, they were defending, marking individual. Now they play, uh, they mark more uh, in zone. They have uh, deep fullbacks. They play with a lot of players inside. They associate short passes. Uh, they play with players outside. Uh, they are physical, very good team, so that's that's the reason why. I some physical force, for sure, you went me. And the second question: What do you think they need to go further in in this competition in Champions League? Well, they've been in the round of 16 many times, but uh, when they reach quarterfinals, it's difficult for them because their league uh, is uh, stopped. They are on holiday, so they lose the space of the game, and that's very necessary in this uh, in this football. But the quality is always there. Um, I want to ask you about Leroy Sané. Uh, he seems to have a different profile of a typical German player. Do you think he has influence from other cultures or South American football, for example? No. It's very similar to Alemana. Um, I don't think so. I think he, he fits uh, the German profile, very similar type of player, the kind of player that can run uh, for 30, 40 meters. Uh, German players that have their skill, they are able to run 30, 40 meters um, very often. And he has this skill to play behind the lines. And, and he is a skill to play in short spaces. He has a little room for improvement in, in the short space. But he's a, a very typical for me, typical German player. Sudamerican is bueno lo corto. Y él aún tiene espacio para mejorar en ello. Hola, buena tarde. Eh, siempre, la temporada pasada decías que tenías que mejorar en las áreas. Eh, sobre todo. Uh, first of all, do you think there's room for improvement in your team? No, ninguno encajado. Eh, ¿Qué tenéis que mejorar? Si es que se puede mejorar algo este año, porque en las áreas habéis mejorado. Pues claro, se puede mejorar. Well, there's always room for improvement. For example, second half against West Brom, win Chalvium, they were better than us, and the first 30 minutes against Crystal Palace the other day wasn't good. So obviously, there's always room for improvement. Periodistas también. And the second question, uh, I want to ask you about Pablo Maffeo. The fact that he played the other day uh, with Girona against FC Barcelona, do you, do you like that he has these, these opportunities in those kinds of games? Uh, I've always said that uh, Premier League uh, second teams don't compete very well in, in that level. They need uh, uh, they need this this kind of competition. If they can't play in the first team, they need to go to other leagues like Netherlands, Spain, and be in those big games, face play, players like uh, Leo Messi, and that's the best way to improve. Uh, young players like Pablo Maffeo and others uh, must play, and the sooner they they reach this this uh, competition, this level of competition, the better for them to. to to a step forward and become better players. Pues, su crecimiento es mucho más rápido y ahí se ve si tiene nivel o no tiene nivel.